when Amy and Ali set the gallery up, I, I spent some time telling them about how it would never work. <laughs> so uh, it, it totally has. Yeah, okay, this little gallery, yeah. one little of nowhere, and I have like such a quality thing. It's really important for Scotland to still have that focus. There's a bunch of artists that they work with who their only goal was to have a show at Rico. It's kind of, it's that, you know, it's one of those kind of touchstone places for Scotland. Everything that's in the gallery, or has been in the gallery, you know, we've approved. There's been... We've approved? Well, you know, I mean, not approved, but you know, like, we've invited it. It's not I like... thought you meant, like, we approve, approve of that. <laughs> no, but like, you know, it's like... We approve of it. It's, uh... <laughs> We've done quite a lot of travelling at art school and I'd been painting graffiti since I was like 14 or 15 and we'd seen lots of spaces and got to know people who had come from that background, graffiti background and were going into sort of maybe doing some gallery stuff and some shows and yeah we'd seen these spaces work like, all over the world and we kind of thought we should bring one to Scotland. Brian Elf, like he was doing shows in, in Edinburgh in like Bongo Club. But they're they're not dedicated spaces. I haven't seen it elsewhere, we thought it would be better to like much better to have a like a dedicated space for those things, you know. We were doing stuff for clubs and like banners and clubs and stuff like that and canvases and at the time there was a lot of people making work but there was no nowhere really to, to show it, I suppose. Well, you mean Ali were I was thinking of making a gallery, doing the sort of styles of art that, that we were already into anyway. I think it seemed quite a good good idea. Also, that there was a few other things that w were going on at the same time, I guess, or like maybe down in London, or there was also analogue books over in Edinburgh. They also had a tiny wee space at the back that they put on exhibitions in. We were inspired by that as well. And I think as time went on, we realised that we wanted it just to be an art gallery and just about the art. We were living in the West End, we were living just up the road and this space came up, it had a big to let sign on it and it was a private landlord so it just worked really well and when we first met him and came into space it was just this little paper shop um, that had been really like run down so the whole space was kind of falling apart. I don't, there hadn't been people in it for... For years, yeah. it was just kind of appealing, this, the shape and size of it and the fact that there was the archway which we, we hoped we could run workshops out here and be able to paint in here and it just seemed like kind of ideal space. We had so much help though from people as well just in the actual like building and the space and like we built a floor like that was a major thing that we did and, and like that was just all our friends just volunteering coming down in the evening and like we turned it around in like what like three weeks from it being like completely knackered to to ready to ready to go. And that was when we were working in the day and then coming in in the evenings to sort um, stuff out. So yeah, we had I mean we had tons of support from like friends and stuff. Which and we always have. There's been loads of people that have helped out all the way mm. through. The amount of people that came to the first opening and the amount of people that supported it from the very beginning, I think was a bit of a was a bit of a revelation. And I think maybe because we were always just thinking about it as this little thing that we were just going to try and do. Whereas because other people took it seriously from the start, it always pushed us on to then for us to take it more seriously we had... and try and push it, the quality of it. When I first became aware of Rico, I think they'd been open a couple of years. I, I ran a, a shop and a magazine called Skinny Cap, a kind of graffiti magazine and shop in Dundee. You know, we were kind of, there was a bit of a crossover between the things that the things that we did, and they were bringing quite a lot of really interesting artists that I admired into the country, and so I started making trips through to see the shows, and kind of just got to know the guys through that. What happened was that in the first or the second exhibition, 
I was emailing out people, inviting people into shows. I was doing quite a lot of research, looking at different portfolios, and I'd contacted an artist in New York called Crash. I just really liked his work, and he got back in touch and um, and said, yeah, it's always nice to be asked. I'll, I'll definitely send over some work. And Ali was like, it's not the Crash, is it? And I was like, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, and we kind of looked into it, and it was the Crash who's one of really the original graffiti artists from New York. He's like the, one of the guys. And so Ali really did know a lot about his work and had followed his, his work. So it was this kind of weird coincidence that all kind of tied it together. And he was so lovely. I, we've exhibited his work again since that show, um, but he also put us in touch with some other artists that sent work over as well. And that then, meant that other people kind of went, oh, there's this new gallery in Glasgow and they're exhibiting work from Crash and Days and that just immediately meant that people kind of trusted what we were doing. So they just took a punt with us, really. They didn't know anything about us. And then because of that, other people then started to get in touch. I think they built a reputation pretty fast. That makes them a real prospect then, I think. So I think everybody that's kind of came through the door has just been totally captivated by the place because it is this little space in the middle of Glasgow, completely unexpected. Things have evolved so much and, you know, things happened like when Insa came up and Red Bull support him. And then after that, we built up a relationship with Red Bull. So they started to support projects that we were doing or exhibitions, but then also they do other projects where they um, commission artists to paint murals in bars and clubs and that kind of thing. So they started to employ us to facilitate those or to paint them ourselves. And so that took us in a bit of a different direction. And then Amnesty International got in touch and asked us to project manage a mural exhibition almost at the Edinburgh Festival with a group of artists. And that was the first time that we'd really done anything like that because so many of the artists that we work with do that kind of work. And, then, and that took us into a bit of a different realm. That was really exciting. So each of the artists painted a mural and then we all painted a big group mural at the end, which then led to, say, like Fool's Gold and going away on the tour and the artists painting murals in each city as we went uh, across to Poland and, and then Rudimentary Perfection, where we worked with Mark to curate and plan um, 10 artists all being here from all over the world. That was definitely not in the plan or yeah, any sort, sort of, of idea when we set up Rico that that was going to be part of it and in fact it's become a major part of what we do. Yeah, the sort of the project management kind of agency side of things which is completely informal when brands come to us and ask for artists or for work to be made and, and that was, I mean, that was never that was never like a consideration at the start, it was just so you know that's been a major thing that's come about um, just through just through being open just you know having a having a space where people can come in and see stuff and I guess get ideas for projects that they can use our uh, artists that we work with for. We went up to Inverness that was that was, that was quite good actually go on tour I suppose <laughs> sort of project was painting a in the car park. There was a programme of projects called Sublime and part of that was a live car paint event. And because we had use of a multi-storey car park, I had it in my mind that it would be fantastic to do something with cars, so whether that was um, installations or painting them. And I'd met Recoat and I was thinking about whether that might be something that would interest them. And then I saw something that they'd done. It was a project in the centre of Glasgow uh, with a Ford car. So often a whole bunch of things kind of converge. And so I contacted them to see if they would be receptive to doing this. And, um, but the, the idea was these wouldn't be sponsored cars. This was very much about Inverness coming forward and volunteering cars for artists to transform. It got an incredible reaction. Mm, it was you know, really good. So like, they wanted us back the next year and in that year we kind of changed it a little bit and involved some local artists as well from up there. So we took our wee crew and all, made an, a new wee group up there yeah. and did another five or six, I think. Yeah. Um, but it just seems to really excite people. So we kind of set all the cars out somewhere public and paint them over a couple of days. 
and then do a photo shoot with them at the end. It's just gone really well. So then people are driving these really brightly coloured, beautiful cars around the Highlands. It's pretty yeah. cool. And I really love um, the way that they choose the work which is here, which is always sort of technically proficient, graphically really attractive and satisfying and everything's very well made, but it's also very contemporary and clean and yeah, I, I love their sort of selection process and their eye. I think there's just something about the way that those guys pick the shows. They're just really well considered, particularly in the kind of group shows that those guys put on and just the, you know, the kind of people that they put together and I think the shows have been impeccably curated. Across, across all the shows that we've had, we've had such a mixture of kinds of work, so painting and drawing and sculpture and photography and we've had work from people that are maybe still at art school all the way through to really quite established artists that are kind of mid-career artists. Yeah, that, that mix for me has always felt really good. We were starting to be called the Graffiti Gallery. It's, it's, well, it's completely inaccurate, really. I it mean, is completely inaccurate, because obviously graffiti has to be illegal and out on the streets. A lot of the people we work with do come from a graffiti background. But then there's also a lot of people that don't they and don't. never would. And yeah, yeah. It's just, about, it's just about people being creative and sort of, you know, if you do paint graffiti for a long time, then maybe there comes a point where you think, oh, well, maybe I don't want to always do that, but I've got skills as a, as a painter, so maybe I'll try these materials in a different way. And, and, you know, you come up, some people come up with some really nice stuff, you know. People were doing stuff, but it, was, it wasn't, it was all kind of quite splintered. And I suppose Rico was a good place because everyone could kind of put it together. <laughs> I know loads of graffiti guys that have done, done stuff in there. People might not even think they would make work that would be like that. So. I think I just lurked about until they decided to give me a show. <laughs> no, I was a graffiti artist for years and years, maybe I don't know, 20 years or so. And then um, gradually kind of made the, the jump into doing kind of more gallery based stuff. And that's almost entirely down to, to Rico. And so they were kind of the first ones to, um, I think, see something in my work probably before there was even anything to actually see you know so they gave me a chance pretty early on to to sort of show my stuff in a different setting in a gallery setting i think i think just having anybody believe in what you're doing and just actually give you some kind of platform to to show your stuff is incredible like it just really takes kind of one person just to say yeah that's pretty good why don't you try this and i think having that guidance as well they've never at any point influenced the work that I did directly. They're, they're very good at just kind of like nudging artists or maybe suggesting they might try this kind of thing, you know, because they, they, they both have really aesthetic understanding. So it's kind of, I think that's great to be able to tap into. For, for not just for me, for like, there's a whole bunch of artists around, um, around Rico that have benefited incredibly from, from their kind of guidance. <laughs> well, because Ali and Amy, well, you really used to continually making and doing exhibitions. Even if people were saying, oh, I don't know how to frame or even how to arrange the work on the walls and stuff, they would help them with hanging the stuff. And there was a times where Ali's been making frames for people as well. The last exhibition, Ali built some stuff as well for me, which is quite good. It's just one piece of it's now a coffee table in the other room. So <laughs> they've learned. Well, like learned by doing all the different things, it's good you can pass on that advice to to younger folk that aren't that don't really quite know what they're, they're doing. There's a you know young practitioner here in Inverness who brought his portfolio along to one of the sessions we were doing to talk to and to Amy and a number of other people from Rico, um, and there's nowhere for him to go uh, locally. And so he went to visit Rico. I think for young people like that, there's, they, 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 there's a real need for a bit of validation about what they're doing and to have a physical space where you can go and 
um, you know, connect with people that you see as your peers or, you know, your future kind of mentors or inspiration? I think part of Rico's deal has always been to try and, as well as kind of show, like, all these like sort of established people is to, to kind of give a platform for Scottish artists or emerging Scottish, Scottish artists to showcase their work. So I think it'd be really interesting to see who comes up next or who's inspired by them and kind of what the next kind of wave of, of kind of Rico, Rico tours, Rico tees. Yeah. I really wanted it to be that in group shows we would have maybe someone that was just starting out exhibiting alongside somebody that's been making work for 20, 25, 30 years and and that it sits together nicely and that then the promotion of the show and everything brings everybody up together. I like that a lot. And I'm I'm really keen that we always Yeah, well it's a bit inspiring. It's a bit inspiring those those younger that younger generation of people, you know, like, and, and showing people from Scotland and Glasgow you know, this is why this person has to so focus. It works hard, works really nice, and really, really well finished. They promote themselves well, whatever it is, you know. So, you know, that was part of the welcome and bring on the people here by showing the luck. Whatever, this connect here that seems quite off. I think so. It's heavy to have a different. Just a little bit of a little as I was able to, to kind of rub shoulders with my kind of heroes, whenever an artist or somebody they're working with comes through town, they're kind of adopted by Rico's family. And I think when everybody leaves, like, there's always a couple of tears shed. What's happened so many times is that people totally fall in love with Glasgow and with the people that come to the shows. Yeah. So they've built up relationships with other people. There's offers to go and stay with with them wherever they're from to loads of people that they've met while they're here and yeah, they love like, the food, they love the bars, they I don't love know. Yeah, we've hanging always... out here and, and we've always tried to take them off to go and paint yeah. in other places. And so I hope that we've always shown everybody a good time and they've yeah. kind of gone away having experienced the, the warmness of Glasgow. Yeah. And Scotland. At the very least, been to a good flat party. Yeah. <laughs> my first time in Glasgow, and uh, it's not going to be the last one. And like funny, well, like people from my own town that I didn't know, then they just see you know, Morton. Morton is living in Berlin. We never met. Uh, to me, man, that's that's <clears throat> that's what we do. We paint. Is that we come here to showcase? It's a small gallery. We know that. We know that you know we brought small works. We know that we want to fit, but it wasn't about that. It was about coming together. And that for Rico to go out to the city, when they came and said, hey, look, you're going to show in the gallery and we have a wall for you, that's huge because that's what we do. And that's what we travel to a city, we would have been painting a wall on our own anyways. So we're very grateful to Amy, to the, to the gallery that for getting us all this, this opportunity to actually come outside the gallery and, and interact with the, the, the Glasgow people, you know. So I think that's, that's, a big, that's a big thing. Getting to work with those people, but also you know, when they're actually here and you see how they are, they do work and you get to hang out with them and you get to build relationships with them. And, you know, that that's what's really cool about it, you know, kind of getting to see people's processes close up and it's seeing people develop as well, you know, like kind of like people that we've invited to ha have shows in space and then use it as a springboard to, to move on. I had a show called The Loneliness Machines at Rico. You know, they basically just give you the space and you can do whatever you like in that space, I was able to put the kind of the audio and the visual stuff together. And that ended up being almost directly responsible for me securing a six month residency with um, Aberdeen University, working with marine biologists um, in the Highlands. Um, and if, if it hadn't been for Rico, I wouldn't have been, you know, I wouldn't have been in contact with um, with those people. And I wouldn't have stood a chance of, of getting it. Like the, the kind of relationships and the, kind of the network that I've been able to access through that has opened up like doors that, that definitely it's not even that the doors wouldn't have been opened, the doors wouldn't have been there. The team Rico thing was like a collective but uh, like quite a big big team but not everyone would always be in it but you know like if there was bigger projects everyone could be involved. It was really just to sort of formalise like a, 
the relationships that we had with the ten people we worked with the most, and who were all Scottish based. We also wanted to pick a group of artists that really represented the kind of work that we showed to make sure that there was kind of graffiti-esque in there, but also illustration, illustration yes. or figurative stuff, and then there's other people that do abstract work. And so, we, yeah, we wanted it to be a real kind of cross-section cross of, of what we do. A lot of them we were already working on projects with, so it, it kind of made sense to pull yeah. them all together and to try and do projects. We get asked to go and do projects, or you know, we wanted to, it to be that we could just call on those people I don't know, it's always quite fun because we kind of all know each other now like really well. I suppose it kind of maybe goes back to a little bit of the kind of the graffiti thing and the crew thing and just working with people that you know well and we're all able to collaborate quite easily. So you know kind of what they're going to do and so we can all we can all work pretty well together and we all get on pretty well. Like all the artists that were involved in it, I knew quite well and, and got on quite like the style. Each person has a different style as well and approach. I suppose the good thing about what we did was that it can all merge together somehow. Like you can find, find a way for it to work together, to create one piece. And it's a fun thing to do when you've got like a sort of a core crew of people that you can be like, right, shall we go to Inverness for the weekend and we can all go and you know, kind of yeah. enjoy it and we were, um, make it We were fun. also invited to go down to the Nottingham Street Art Festival and we did an exhibition down there. Mm. We, we hung the show and then went out for meals and met other people that were making art down there and went and did some painting and all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. But it was really nice it's just good. to go away on a wee holiday together but all make work and spend some time creating work together. Yeah, I think as well because, really, everyone's, really nice. because everyone's working on their own stuff a lot, you know, like people come up with different processes and ways to do things and then you see that and you think oh maybe I'll do that and it's always nice to like just yeah have that like I say that little core group like the show now you know like everyone's in the space kind of working and stuff together and it's just a good atmosphere it's a good way to work I like it you know I yeah. like you know they're all good people who I like I enjoy hanging out with so that's kind of that's that's positive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's been so many amazing shows um, there's just a list of, of incredible artists who's kind of within that kind of scene have become recognised artists and, and they, like a bunch of them, myself included, like weren't before Rico. You know, when you start reeling off all the really amazing shows, you suddenly realise, you know, like how far those artists have come. Because it's not, it's not just, it's, it's not all these artists that nobody's ever heard of anymore. It's kind of like, you're like, oh right, yeah, him. Oh, him. Oh yeah, totally. It was literally meant to be like a three month project. I think our initial kind of lease we got for the space was three months. Like that's kind of why we're kind of <clears throat> getting to a point now where we want to stop and evaluate it all and come back and do it better. We're maybe still in that initial kind of three month mindset thing, you know, and, and actually like we've built something that's like way bigger than we could have ever imagined. I don't, I don't think, yeah, necessarily that we've ever really considered it in, in terms of like, the long game, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's always been Which I think has like been part of its time. success as well though, because it means that everything's always been very kind of punchy. A quick turnaround and, and then we're on to the next thing and people walk in they're like, oh, the space looks totally different. Mm. Every single month there was another show and there was just somebody else amazing coming through the doors. And it was that just constantly inspired by the, by the kind of, like the calibre of the, the artists that, that were coming through. I don't know where else that happens to that extent. I mean, they've been putting on, what, like 10 shows a year, plus satellite shows for five years. I mean, it's like, it's a, it's an insane work rate. It now deserves to, for us to sort of, well, just organise it a bit better, you know, just yeah. sort it out. And it's so hard to do that when you're putting on shows and doing murals. And yeah, it can be a bit relentless and, you know, to keep it all going all the time so is a, yeah. a lot of work. Whereas so trying to plan, yeah. trying to plan to the next thing is like really difficult. So that's kind of, that's kind of part of the reason why we, we, we need, we need and we want to, to call time in the space. For, it's quite it's fine when you're 25. <laughs> Oh, now you're so old, now you're so old, can't, can't hack the paint. But you know, like, it, yeah, there comes a time in life when, you know, you kind of feel like you could be doing things a bit better. And I think that's got most to do with it.
It started so organically and homegrown, and now it's time to streamline it all a little bit. That's that's all. I think over the last five years, I think um, I think they've developed along with the artists that they showcase. It's really sad that the, the space that they have now is closing down, but it feels like the right time for it to happen. I think I think the kind of level of shows that are, they're putting on now requires a different kind of space. I don't know if it would be be that sad sad about it really. I think six years is quite a good a good run now. The gallery's evolved outside of the the space to do more site specific sort of work. The communals and, and the workshops as well. And also managed to do exhibitions in other places and like uh, take it like a like on tour. In the beginning, because a lot of the artists were sort of street artists or graffiti artists and now people have had studios and make much bigger work or or installations and stuff, and there's only so so much room in that. It's quite a small space. So. With that, with that Rico, I wouldn't be here, and a whole bunch of people that I know wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have met, you know, all these incredible artists, and all these artists' careers at different points in their careers have been helped along by come to Glasgow and um, and shown with with Rico. <clears throat> Over the years, all sorts of people have come and played their part in Rico, and um, I think we're really grateful. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, we couldn't do. We couldn't. It. We couldn't have done what we have done without the help of other yeah. people and people doing incredible amounts of work for just being a part of it. Been quite amazing, and because of that, we've met the most fantastic group of people that we would never have met yeah. otherwise. Without exception, all of the people that who have come to the gallery or worked at the gallery are just lovely people. I don't mm. know if we've just been really lucky or or what. When they're here, they come and stay with us and we all hang out for a week and create a show together. Everyone's been just super, super cool and worked really hard to produce... The best they can. The best they can for the, for the, uh, yeah, for the space. And that's what keeps me going and inspires me and makes me want to do the next one and all of that is all these relationships that we build up. It's a, I think it's a really interesting time, both for the gallery and for the artists that they're, they're kind of working with, you know. It does feel like the end of an era in that sense, that kind of hub that Rico was, the physical space, I think it'll be remembered as that, like as an amazing space where all this kind of stuff happened.